Kan ya makan betu bustan malan alwan hal bustan abiyad yasmin u fulli kaman ahmar bar o uruman akhdar asil sabr u tin janni malyani alhan فجأة ما بعرف شو صار حن هالسن بلو ما My name is Ruba Shamshum. I am a singer and a songwriter. Today, I want to share my story with you. I want to share my experience as a contemporary Palestinian artist, contemporary in a society that is heavily immersed in the past, a society that likes what it knows and knows what it likes. And while there's, there's pleasure in what we know, there's pleasure in the familiar, in the comfort zone, I believe that the role of the artist is much bigger than that. I believe that the artist should take the audience to new places, should stimulate their minds with new ideas, not just give instant pleasure. I will talk about three milestones that changed how I perceive art and the role of the contemporary artist in a society that is heavily monistic and rigid. Number one, nostalgia. Nostalgia as a starting point, not a target. As a Palestinian, I grew up listening to my grandmother's stories. Stories about the Palestinian Nakba when many Palestinians were displaced from their homeland in 1948. Stories about resistance and survival, when my grandmother had to go to sneak from one village to another in order to sing or to perform with a choir, a choir she's still a part of at the age of 86, by the way. Resistance stories when a song was more than just a song. Songs were codes told, for prison, told to prisoners in order to inform them that they will be free soon. So I heard those, those stories and they became an in integral part of my identity. They shaped me. So when the time came for me to write the song I sang in the beginning, uh, a song that I wrote for a film set in the 60s called When I Saw You, beautiful film, it didn't take much effort to get the lyrics out. It felt like the words were al already inside. I did some brainstorming with friends, but my grandmother made sure that the words were planted inside of me. And so, while it's really important for me to preserve del delicately my grandmother's stories, it's important that I do it within my story. Nostalgia in art should reflect on who we are right now, rather than just take us back to who we were. When we use it as a tool, we should think about how it translates into our present, into our current time. The classical Arabic repertoire, music repertoire, is called Al Zaman al Jamil, which means the beautiful era or the beautiful time. It was a time when um, musicians revolutionized Ar Arabic music. Um, new instruments were added to the orchestration, and um, you know, Western melodies were added to the Eastern ones. It was a nice fusion. It was a time of musical pioneer. And when I think about creating art, I think that we always have to think that our time should always be the beautiful time. We should always think and rethink art. It should never be static. My grandmother 
was very important and it's still a very important part of my life. But it's very important that I reflect who I am too from her stories. In order to appreciate who we are right now, I think we should reflect on ourselves. We should face who we truly are. And we should accept who we, who we truly are. And that brings me to my second point, self-acceptance. When I started singing about a decade ago, I gravitated towards uh, styles like rock and later on to jazz. And I was asked many times why I chose these styles specifically and not sing in the, uh, the classical Arabic repertoire. Songs sung by divas like Umm Kalthum or Fayrouz, very influential, incredibly influential divas. I didn't really know how to answer that question. I just felt apologetic and somewhat guilty for my preference. But now, a decade later, I, I think I know. If you close your eyes and imagine your favorite color, can you think why you love that color? Or when you started loving that color? I think the reasons for your preference change with time. Maybe the color itself changes with time. That's the same way I think about music. One of my songs uh, called Madeleine helped me get to that place of self-acceptance. When I wrote Madeleine, uh, I was in a bad place in my life. I didn't quite like who I became. So, accordingly, Madeleine is a person who hates most, most things. She's afraid of the ocean, doesn't like the touch of sand, she, she's afraid of the heights, uh, she hates waking up early and going to sleep late at night, hates the cold and the heat, uh, she hates the flowers because of her spring allergies, and most importantly, Madeleine hates weddings and people. In general, people is not her thing. At the end of the day, Madeleine looks in the mirror and realizes that she hates the girl in the mirror. Madeleine is very important for me because she was the best therapy I could ask for at the time. That girl in the perfect room temperature, in the comfort zone, was me. I think that in order to write freely, we should face ourselves, accept our dark side. Strangely, I started liking Madeleine after a while. Now, warning. Accepting yourself doesn't necessarily mean that people will accept you. My third milestone is release your bubble. In 2014, I released a song uh, called Fuqa'ati, which means my bubble in Arabic. Um, the song delves into escapism and the urge to escape reality that I felt while watching the news about everything that was happening and still happening in the Middle East. Uh, the, first line of the, the first line of the song says, my beautiful bubble, protect me from any harm. It was kind of like, I was trying to make this safe place for myself to, to express my feelings. Uh, so I wanted to release the, the, the song with a video, with an animated video, and so I worked with a illustrator, with an illustrator called Charlo Chama, and together we created the world of the bubble. The video has a girl, a little girl, that goes on a journey with her floating bed and on the way encounters a candy cane weaving machine, a masked skeleton, and a whale. When I released the song, people either loved it or completely hated it. One person wrote a comment on YouTube uh, using words like song of the witches and the sorceresses, and then ended the comment with, and I quote, 
I don't think the content should be shown for kids under the age of three to four years old. We don't want another generation who is mentally ill. <laughs> But this video uh, reflects on us and our entire generation. Unquote. This person found an, a colorful animated video that talks about bubbles um, and the comfort, like a, a safe space, uh, dangerous for kids, in a world where we have much bigger monsters. It was actually very flattering that my bubble, as fragile as it was, intimidated this person. It was in a category, he couldn't, well, they couldn't put it in a category where it made sense, so it must have been witchcraft. We have to remember, the past is an important part of us, but it's only just a part. And while it's easier to go back to what we already know, it's more, far more interesting to explore ourselves, our universe, to think about what makes us tick and invite people into that universe. I think it's very important, this, this, this ability to delve into a piece of art that we're not familiar with is very important to develop attributes like empathy, to acquire a sense of innovation, and to accept, to accept the difference in people. I wish I had an education, a different education when I was younger, an education that made me feel better about my preferences or my difference. Maybe I would have accepted who I was much earlier. Tonight, a Lebanese music group, a very amazing, um, innovative music group, was supposed to be playing in a specific Middle Eastern country. I will not say the name of that country. Um, but a few days ago, I learned that their, their performance was cancelled because of their difference, because of the, what they have to say. They speak of current events, current issues that are very important to them, equal sexuality for everyone. And some people are afraid of that. Some people are afraid of honesty and of accepting yourself, I suppose. Accepting new and different art means accepting new and different people. Accepting the difference and understanding it instead of mocking it. I really hope that all of these amazing artists that are working today inside their bubbles, are trying to create new and amazing um, realities that we can explore. I hope that they can change the future and to make, it, make the society more pluralistic and more accepting of the other. And to all the artists out there, release your bubble to the, to the world. Your story matter. Don't hesitate to speak about present issues that are important to you, to your timeline. Strong art is art that has roots. And art with strong roots fills the sky with seasonal colorful fruit. Thank you very much.